I've always dreamed of the day when we can ditch the controller in VR and start just using gloves for everything. But not just any gloves. Gloves that allow you to feel whatever is happening in virtual reality, whether that be holding a ball or a gun, or something else. And they sort of exist right now if you have thousands of dollars to throw at it. But turns out there's a guy that has created open source force feedback haptic gloves for VR that you can build and use today for less than the cost of this Bluetooth selfie pen. So I'm gonna travel all the way to his workshop to build a set and see just how they work. So let's go check it out. This changes everything. Hi, uh, I'm Lucas. Uh, I am a computer science student and I have been building VR haptic gloves for fun. So uh, I originally uh, was born in Brazil. Uh, I came here when I was very young and I've always like really had a big interest in technology uh, and building and tinkering with things. I started programming back when in like sixth grade or seventh grade. I didn't even start with like a Vive or Oculus CV1 first. I started with a Google Cardboard and I think that was one of the things that made me really appreciate the janky tinker side of VR, where, you know, people that don't necessarily have all the resources to be able to get, you know, the best, you know, top of the line VR tech, uh, you know, just start with what they have available to them. Uh, and there's been, you know, a really amazing group of people that have gotten Google Cardboard support and things you never would have expected. And I'd say that's really similar to getting homemade VR haptic gloves, you know, to work that way. Oh my gosh, this is so sick. <laughs> Sorry, I'm like geeking out. No, no, that's that's what I want. Yeah. Why don't you like tell me the story of these gloves because they've massively changed your life and they're probably changing a lot of people's lives in VR as well. So tell me about these. So this is prototype one. This is the one that went viral on TikTok first. Um, it's certainly you know very glitchy. Uh, the spools are very slow and it falls apart very easily, but it worked. Uh, and it was good enough to get the testing data that I needed to move on. Um, and this is prototype two, uh, which was a lot more comfortable, more reliable, didn't fall apart after 10 seconds, but it was still pretty slow and bulky. So I wanted to reduce the bulk a lot in prototype three. Uh, and this is the one that I made my first YouTube video on. Uh, it was a lot more reliable, and then the wiring was also a lot better because uh, I actually started focusing on how it looks a little bit. Um, and then as well as it started becoming a little faster, uh, especially with lubrication. So in prototype 3.1, when I added Bluetooth and then as well really lubricated the spools so they would spring back a lot quicker. And so this is prototype four, right? Yeah, this is prototype four right here. So prototype four has force feedback haptics uh, using the nine gram servos. Um, so those will pull your fingers back so you can feel the resistance of objects. That's amazing. So real quick before we build, I want to bring up why I'm so excited for this and what this can do for anyone really hardcore about VR. I've tried many VR gloves and covered even more, but just about all of them are completely out of reach for like 99% of all VR enthusiasts. I mean, the Tesla glove is just one example of a manufactured VR glove that has similar features to these, but it'll run you around $5,000. Compare that to this, where all you need is a handful of components that only cost a few bucks and a few hours of your time and, well, you have a fully functioning, at least for the most part, haptic force oh. feedback glove. All you need are gloves, of course, which can be any variety or size, a bunch of 3D printed parts that are in the description, pulleys, a handful of potentiometers, an ESP32 or similar microcontroller, servo motors, and some wire along with some basic tools like a crimp or soldering iron. And uh, quite a bit of patience. Okay, we got the gloves. It's time to build. Okay, you ready to do this? Yeah, let's do it. All right, so um, how, how difficult would you say it is to actually build these? Like I have I've experienced soldering, I've experienced doing lots of weird stuff with motorcycles. How difficult is it? I'd say, so putting the parts together is a lot like just Legos, like snapping things together. Uh, the hardest part is probably wiring it up. Right. Um, so the nice thing is if you have the right tools like crimps and wire and stuff like that, it makes it way easier. Grab some pliers and cutters and stuff so we can do this. But it's pretty easy. All you do is take this off just by snipping that. Okay. Uh, and then we'll be reuse reusing this later. So we save that. And then this is really easy, just. Uh, and then we just take our spring and there's a little hole right here. And it's actually, this is modeled the same way as those little white pieces that we just threw out. Right. Uh, so you put this through sideways. Oh, so this way? Yep, and then rotate it 90 degrees. So now all we have to do is knife the rest of them. Cool. So you just get the under underside of each of those 
Do you want like eye protection or are you good? I'm good. <laughs> nah. <laughs> Living on the dangerous side. And before I'm in the hospital for a messed up eye. <laughs> well, I kind of need those for VR. <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah, I thought about that. Like, what happens if, if like, I go blind one day? Don't go blind. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't go blind. Don't go blind. Nice. Okay, cool. Actually, go ahead and do the gluing of the glove now. Oh, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was just like, whoa, we're already in that step. That's crazy. Okay. Thank you. Cool, cool. That actually does look kind of cool. <laughs> With the, yeah. I know it sounds weird, like for my, the verbiage that I'm about to use, but like the intimacy of building the thing that you're using in VR. Yes, 100%. Is incredible. Like I, right now, I'm just so, it looks ugly, but I'm so proud of it. Yes, absolutely. Like I am so proud of this thing. And like I just, we're gonna have so much fun together. We're gonna be playing in VR chat. We're gonna be in Boneworks. We're gonna be in Half Life Alex. Like we're gonna be best friends. And I built you. Next thing is, uh, I guess we can wire it up and then while well, that's printing, and then we can try it out, just the finger tracking first in a game. Positive, negative, just first goes to the top. Cool. Uh, so this is gonna go to the board. And okay. next we're gonna crimp the next one over here. So you wanna clip that right, uh, right about there. We can leave a little excess just in case. Because right. the worst is like when you don't have enough and then you're screwed. Right. So I'll, I'll show you how to do a crimp as well. Let's see how that works. MIT actually has like a soldering station in the dorm I'm living in though. So it's oh be, wow. Yeah, it's gonna be fun. College I went to you just had alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like we're almost done. It's actually coming out pretty good. Hold up. Right here, and she's in. Look at that. Almost done. Almost done. <laughs> okay, so I've got the glove mostly done. We're about to go test it out and see how the finger tracking actually works. We just slide this sucker on. Oh my. Okay, cool. <laughs> That's incredible. Okay, cool. Look at that. Nice. That is amazing. <laughs> okay, so that's that loose connector problem. <laughs> Over here. <laughs> okay, okay. Lucas! Good. You like it? What the hell, man? <laughs> Dude! You've made something really cool. Like, really cool. Thank you, man. I'm, I'm just blown away, man. <laughs> Isn't it awesome to go from this to that? <sighs> okay, so we got finger tracking working and it's mind boggling, but now it gets even crazier because we're gonna actually add motors to it and buttons. So let's go do that. <laughs> so we just got all of the motors uh, put on. So now it'll actually pull your, hold your fingers back. So if you're holding something like a, a ball, for example, it'll hold your fingers where the geometry is at in VR. See the spools moving through these strings? And then there's motors attached. You can see I'm pulling now. I now no longer, that's <laughs> so freaking cool. I, I can't, I mean, I can, I just don't want to break anything. Okay, now I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold like this and then can you open it back up? Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> this is insane. Can I, can we, like, are we like ready to hop into a game? Yep, pretty soon? Yep. Let's do it. Okay. So right now, only a few games have true support for these gloves that take full advantage of all of its features like force feedback. If you want to skip on force feedback for more games, then these pretty much function as Valve Index controllers, since the gloves are actually just emulating knuckle controller input. This means for menus, it's just a trigger pull with your index finger, and it can be tracked using pretty much any device that's SteamVR trackable, a Vive tracker or wands, or even an Oculus touch controller. Now, like I said, there's only a couple games that fully support force feedback, but that's 
it's kind of up to developers to implement support or for people to make mods. But if there's one game that I would want feedback like this, it's for Half-Life Alex. Already a super immersive game, but let me tell you, it's one of the absolute craziest feelings on the planet when I'm grabbing a virtual door handle and my fingers close around what feels like a door handle. I spent way too long doing simple things like spinning a roundabout because, well, it's really hard to explain, but it's absolutely insane to feel like you're holding something in VR, not to mention just the feeling of ditching a controller. It's a completely new way to enjoy VR, and it's far more of an immersion provider than any increase in FOV or clarity in any headset, and it's so good that it's honestly hard to go back. I can't go back, I'm sorry. And also, addressing the elephants in the room, how do you move without an analog stick, which is kind of the biggest problem of gloves, and easy, just add one. It's not as crazy as it sounds, and if you want buttons, just add them too, you can do whatever you want. Building these gloves with Lucas has probably been one of the sickest projects I've ever done with this channel, and it's a further testament to just how amazing the VR community is as a whole. And it's even crazier that everything I showed you today is something you can just build as well. Not every game supports it fully, and you're going to run into issues, maybe even a lot of them. But believe me, you'll have a lot of fun doing it. And you'll likely learn a thing or two because I know I have. And no, there's no way these little 9 gram servos will ever be capable of hurting your hand. But these gloves aren't done yet. This is part of a now pretty massive community of people constantly improving these gloves with their own designs since it's all open source and you can add whatever you want. Or even mod whatever game you want to add support for. And yeah, I mean that any game. Hey, well, I know this was a different style of video, but I really hope that you enjoyed it. A great way to show me that you want more content like this is to please leave a like and comment on this video. If I reach 15,000 likes, then I'll build a pair and I'll give it away here. Plus, it helps with the algorithm gods. And also, subscribe if you do want to see more of my upcoming content. I got a lot of really crazy stuff coming. And if you're interested, we may be doing a Twitch stream along with Lucas to have a sort of build party so you don't have to build one of these by yourself. And you can find more information on that in my Discord server. Anyways, much love, thrill out.